Vow, night the fifth. Infected mad, he danced on his mountains, high and dark as heaven, now fixed into one steadfast bulk, his features stonify. From his mouth curses and from his eyes sparks of blighting. Beside the anvil cold, he danced with the ham of Erthona. Terrific pale Anatharmon stretched on the dreary earth. Felt her immortal limbs freeze, stiffening, pale and flexible. His feet shrink, withering from the deep, shrinking and withering. And Anatharmon shrunk up all their fibers, withering beneath, as plants withered by winter, leaves and stems and roots decaying, melt into thin air while the seed, driven by the furious wind, rests on the disty mountain's top. So Laos and Anatharmon shrunk into fixed space, stood trembling on a rocky cliff, yet mighty bulk and majesty and beauty remained, but unexpansive, as far from highest zenith, from the lowest nadir, so far as shrunk lost from the furnaces, a space immense, and left the cold prince of light bound in chains of intellect among the furnaces. But all the furnaces were out, and the bellows had ceased to blow. He stood trembling, and Anatharmon clung around his knees, their senses unexpansive, and one steadfast bulk remain. The night blew cold, and Anatharmon shrieked on the dismal wind, her pale hands cling around her husband, and over her weak head shadows of eternal death sit in the leaden air. But the soft pipe, the flute, the viol, organ, harp, and cymbal, and the sweet sound of silver voices calmed the weary couch of Anatharmon. But her groans drown the immortal harps. Loud and more loud, the living music floats upon the air. Faint and more faint, the daylight wanes. The wheels of turning darkness began in solemn revolutions. Earth convulsed with rending pangs, rocked to and fro, and cried sore at the groans of Anatharmon. Still, the freight harps and silver voices calm the weary couch. From the caves of deepest night, ascending in clouds of mist, the winter spread his wide black wings across from pole to pole. Grim frost beneath and terrible snow linked in a marriage chain began a dismal dance. The winds around on pointed rocks settled like bats innumerable, ready to fly abroad. The groans of Anatharmon shake the skies, the laboring earth, till from her heart rending his way a terrible child sprang forth, and thunder, smoke, and sullen flames, and howlings, and fury, and blood. Soon as his burning eyes were opened on the abyss, the horrid trumpets of the deep bellowed with bitter blasts. The enormous demons woke and howled around the newborn king, crying, Luva, king of love, thou art the king of rage and death. Yours and cast deep darkness round him, raging Luva poured the spears of yours and from chariots round the eternal tent. Discord began, then yells and cries shook the wide firmament. Where is sweet Vala, gloomy prophet? Where the lovely form that drew the body of man from heaven into this dark abyss? Soft tears and sighs. Where are you? Come forth, shout on bloody fields. Show thy soul, Vala. Show thy bow and quiver of secret fires. Draw thy bow, Vala, from the depths of hell thy black draw, and twang the bowstring to our howlings. Let thine arrows black sing in the sky as once they sang upon the hills of light, when dark Erthona wept in torment of the secret pain. He wept and he divided, and he laid his gloomy head down on the rock of eternity, on darkness of the deep, torn by black storms and ceaseless torrents of consuming fire, within his breast his fiery suns chained down and filled with cursings. And breathing terrible blood and vengeance, gnashing his teeth with pain, let loose the enormous spirit in the darkness of the deep, and his dark wife, that once fair crystal form divinely clear within his ribs, producing serpents whose souls are flames of fire. But now the times return upon thee, and Atharman's womb now holds thee, soon to issue forth. Sound, clarions of war, call Vala from her secret recess in all her dark deceit. Then rage on rage shall fierce redound out of her crystal quiver. 
So sung the demons round Red Orc, and round faint Anatharmon, sweat and blood stood on the limbs of loss, and globes as fiery eyelids faded. He roused, and he seized the wonder in his hands, and went shuddering and weeping through the gloom and down into the depths. Anatharmon nursed her fiery child in the dark deeps, sitting in darkness, over her loss mourned in anguish fierce, covered with gloom. The fiery boy grew, fed by the milk of Anatharmon. Loss around her builded pillars of iron and brass and silver and gold fourfold in dark prophetic fear. For now he feared eternal death and utmost extinction. He builded Gulganus on the lake of Udan Edan, upon the limit of translucence. Then he builded Lubin. Tharmus laid the foundations, and Loss finished it in howling woe. But when fourteen summers and winters had revolved over their solemn habitation, Loss beheld the ruddy boy, embracing his bright mother, and beheld malignant fires in his young eyes, discerning plain that Orc plotted his death. Grief rose upon his ruddy brows. A tightening girdle grew around his bosom like a bloody cord. In secret sobs he burst it. The next morn, another girdle succeeds around his bosom. Every day he viewed the fiery youth with silent fear, and his immortal cheeks grew deadly pale. So many a morn and many a night passed over in dire woe, forming a girdle in the day and bursting it at night. The girdle was formed by day, by night was burst in twain. Falling down on the rock, an iron chain link by link locked. Anatharmon beheld the bloody chain of nights and days, depending from the bosom of loss, and how with griding pain he went each morning to his labors with the specter dark, called it the chain of jealousy. Now loss began to speak his woes aloud to Anatharmon, since he could not hide his uncouth plague. He seized the boy in his immortal hands while Anatharmon followed him, weeping in dismal woe, up to the iron mountain's top. And there the jealous chain fell from his bosom on the mountain. The specter dark held the fierce boy. Loss nailed him down, binding around his limbs the accursed chain. How bright Anatharmon howled and cried over her son. Abdurat Loss bound down her loved joy. The hammer of her thonus smote the rivets in terror of brass. Tenfold the demon's rage flamed, tenfold forth-rending, roaring, redounding, loud, loud, louder and louder, and fired the darkness, warring with the waves of Tharmus and snows of Urizen. Crackling, the flames went up with fury from the mortal demon. Surrounded by the flames, the demon grew loud, howling in his fires. Loss folded Anatharmon in a cold white cloud in fear, then led her down into the deeps and into his labyrinth, giving the specter sternest charge over the howling fiend. Concentered into love of parent, Storge's appetite craving, his limbs bound down, mock at his chains, for over them a flame of circling fire unceasing plays to feed them with life and bring the virtues of the eternal worlds. Ten thousand thousand spirits of life lament around the demon, going forth and returning at his enormous call. They flee into the heavens of heavens and back return with wine and food or dive into the depths to bring the thrilling joys of sense to quell his ceaseless rage. His eyes, the lights of his large soul, contract, or else expand. Contracted, they behold the secrets of the infinite mountains, the veins of gold and silver, and the hidden things of Vala, whatever grows from its pure blood, or breathes a fragrant soul. Expanded, they behold the terrors of the sun and moon, the elemental planets and the orbs of eccentric fire. His nostrils breathe a fiery flame. His locks are like the forests of wild beasts. There the lion glares. The tiger and wolf howl there. And there the eagle hides her young in cliffs and precipices. His bosom is like starry heaven. Expanded all the stars sing round. There waves the harvest and the vintage rejoices. The springs flow into rivers of delight, and there the spontaneous flowers drink, laugh, and sing. 
the grasshopper, the emmet and the fly, the golden moth builds their house and spreads her silky bed. Oh, his loins inwove with silken fires are like a furnace fierce as the strong bow in summertime when bees sing round the heath where the birds allow after the shadow and after the water spring. The numerous flocks cover the mountain and shine along the valley. His knees are rocks of adamant and ruby and emerald. Spirits of strength and palaces rejoice in golden armor. Armed with spear and shield, they drink and rejoice over the slain. Such is the demon, such his terror in the nether deep. But when returned to Gulganuza, Lawson and Atharman felt all the sorrow parents feel. They wept toward one another, and Loss repented that he had chained Orc upon the mountain, and Enneth Armand's tears prevailed. Parental love returned, though terrible his dread of that infernal chain. They rose at midnight, hasting to their much-beloved care. Nine days they traveled through the gloom of Entutha and Benethon, Loss taking Enneth Armand by the hand led her along the dismal vales and up to the iron mountain's top where Orc howled in the furious wind. He thought to give to Enneth Armand her son in tenfold joy and to compensate for her tears, even if his own death resulted. So much pity him pained. But when they came to the dark rock and to the spectrous cave, lo, the young limbs had struck and root into the rock, and strong fibers had from the chain of jealousy and wove themselves in a swift vegetation round the rock and round the cave, and over the immortal limbs of the terrible fiery boy. In vain they strove now to unchain, in vain with bitter tears to melt the chain of jealousy. Not Anneth Armand's death nor the consummation of loss could ever melt the chain, nor uproot the infernal fibers from the rocky bed. Not all earth on his strength, nor all the power of Luva's bulls, though they each morning dragged the unwilling sun out of the deep, could uproot the infernal chain, for it had taken root into the iron rock and grew a chain beneath the earth, even to the center, wrapping round the center, and the limbs of Orc, entering with fibers, became one with him, a living chain sustained by the demon's life. Despair and terror and woe and rage enwrap the parents in cold clouds as they bend howling over the terrible boy till fainting by his side the parents fell. No, not long they lay. Erthona's specter found herbs of the pit rubbing their temples. He revived them. All their lamentations, I write not here, but all their afterlife was lamentation. When satiated with grief, they returned back to Golganuza. And Atharman on the road of Dranthan felt the inmost gate of her bright heart burst open, and again closed with a deadly pain. Within her heart, Vala began to reanimate in bursting sobs, and when the gate was open, she beheld that dreary deep where Bride Ahania wept. She also saw the infernal roots of the chain of jealousy and felt the rendings of fierce howling orc. Rending the caverns like a mighty wind pent in the earth, the wide apart as furthest north is from the furthest south, yours and trembled where he lay to hear the howling terror. The rocks shook, the eternal bars tugged to and fro, were rifted outstretched upon the stones of ice, the ruins of his throne. Yours and shuddering heard his trembling limbs, shook the strong caves. Woes of yours and shut up in the deep tons of Erthona. Ah, how shall yours and the king submit to this dark mansion? How is this? Once on the heights I stretched my throne sublime, the mountains of yours and once of silver, where the sons of wisdom dwelt, and on whose tops the virgins sang, rocks of desolation. My fountains, once the haunt of swans, now breed the scaly tortoise. The houses of my harpers have become a haunt of crows. The gardens of wisdom are become a field of horrid graves, and on the bones I drop my tears and water them in vain. Once how I walked from my palace in gardens of delight. The sons of wisdom stood around, the harpers followed with harps. Nine virgins clothed in light composed the song to their immortal voices. And in my banquets of new wine, my head was crowned with joy. 
Then in my ivory pavilions I slumbered in the noon and walked in the silent night among sweet-smelling flowers till on my silver bed I slept and sweet dreams round me hovered. But now my land is darkened and my wise men are departed. My songs are turned to cries of lamentation heard on my mountains and deep sighs under my palace roofs because the steeds of Urizen, once swifter than the light, were kept back from my Lord and from his chariot of mercies. Oh, did I keep the horses of the day in silver pastures? Oh, I refused the Lord of day as the horses of his prince. Oh, did I close my treasures with roofs of solid stone and darken all my palace walls with envyings and hate? O oh, fool, to think that I could hide from his all-piercing eyes the gold and silver and costly stones, his holy workmanship. O oh, fool, could I forget the light that filled my bright spheres was a reflection of his face who called me from the deep. Well, remember, for I heard the mild and holy voice saying, O oh, light, spring up and shine, and I sprang up from the deep. He gave to me a silver scepter and crowned me with a golden crown and said, Go forth and guide my son who wanders on the ocean. But I went not forth. I hid myself in black clouds of my wrath. I called the stars around my feet in the night of councils dark. The stars threw down their spears and fled naked away. We fell. I seized thee, dark Thona, in my left hand falling. And I seized thee, beauteous Luva. Thou art faded like a flower, and like a lily is thy wife, Vala, withered by the winds. When thou didst bear the golden cup at the immortal table, thy children smote their fiery wings, crowned with the gold of heaven. Thy pure feet stepped on the steps divine, too pure for other feet, and thy fair locks shadowed thine eyes from the divine effulgence. Then thou didst keep with strong earthone of the living gates of heaven. Now thou art bound down with him, even to the gates of hell, because thou gavest yours in the wine of the Almighty for steeds of light, that thy might run in thy golden chariot of pride, I gave to thee the steeds. I poured the stolen wine, and drunken with the immortal draft, fell from my throne sublime. O oh, arise, explore these dens, and find that deep pulsation that shakes my caverns with strong shudders. Perhaps this is the night of prophecy, and Luva hath burst his way from Anatharman. When thought is closed in caves, then love shall show its root in deepest hell. End of the fifth night.